Calculus 1, how do you solve problems like this? Okay, so this is how we are going to do it. I will first tell you, if we plug in negative 2 into all the x's, here we will end up with negative 10 on the top and then 0 on the bottom. And then for this one, if we plug in 1 into all the x's, we will get 5 over 0. Right here, make sure you just don't stop here and say they are undefined because we are talking about limits. We are not talking about regular computation. If the question is asking you f of x is equal to that function, right, and then they ask you what's f of negative 2, then it will be, once you see the negative 10 over 0, it will be undefined for the response because for the value of the function, this means that x is exactly equal to negative 2. But right here, when we have x approaching negative 2 from the positive direction, you can think about this as x is just a number that's a little bit bigger, because of the plus, a little bit bigger than negative 2. So how could it be? Well, think about this as negative 1.999. And of course, you can make more nice right here, right? You can get closer and closer to negative 2 if you put on more nice. And the idea is, imagine if you plug in these values into the x's, we want to see how the output of the function behaves. And that's how we are going to figure out the limit. So right here and right here, we really cannot draw any conclusion yet. But I can tell you though, whenever we have a non-zero number on the top, over zero, just like what we have right here, right? We can actually expect that the answer is either negative infinity or positive infinity, not both. This is either or. How do we figure this out? We are just going to check the sign. Huh? Sign check. So how can we do that? The key right here is to pay attention to the denominator because the zero, this right here could be a number a little bit bigger than zero or a little bit less than zero. If it's a little bit less than zero, then it will be negative. If it's a little bit bigger than zero, it will be positive. So we do have zero for the denominator for both of them, and this is how we can do it to make this easier. I will make a note right here real quick for you. We can factor this. So if you get that, we will just get 2x and x, right? And then I need to get negative 4. So let's put on plus 4 and minus 1. So that it will give us the 7. And then the bottom here, if you factor it, we get x minus 1 times x plus 2 for that. For the x approaching 2 from the positive direction. And then just go ahead and put this right here into the factor form. It's easier this way because here you have the square. If you look at this number square, it's much harder to figure out the sign, especially you still have the plus x after that. That's why putting this form right here, not 21 parentheses. So here we go. The top is just going to give us negative 10. Just trust me, or just plug in negative 2 into all the x's. And this right here is for sure negative. It doesn't matter if it's a plus or negative here, because if it's a number a little bit bigger than negative 10, it will still be negative. If it's number less than, a little bit less than negative 10, it will still be negative. The key right here is for the bottom. Here we are going to do this. Parentheses, parentheses, just like this. I'm going to plug in negative 2 plus into this x here, and then right here we will have to minus 1. And then right here, do the same thing. Negative 2 plus, and then plus 2. Now we are going to figure out the sign. Here, this is a negative number just like that, and then minus 1, so this right here will be negative. Yeah? How about this? Well, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. But remember, this is what? This is like that, negative 1.999. If you do this plus 2, this will be what? This right here will be, let me just write this down, negative 1.999 plus 2, it will be past this 0 0.001, right? This is just a number that's a little bit bigger than 0, so technically this right here is 0 plus. However, we do have a negative in front though. So, all in all, what do we get? The top is negative, 
divided by negative is positive, and then this is positive. So all in all, this thing right here will approach past infinity. So let me just write this down, past infinity. Done. Now for this one, let's do the same thing. The top, just plug in one, you will get five, and it will be positive for sure. The bottom, this time, think about one minus as x is equal to a number that's a little bit less than 1. Let's think about this as 0 0.999. Right? That's what 1, plus, 1 minus is. And then we're just going to be plugging 1 minus into here, and then minus 1, and then 1 minus, and then plus 2. Okay, this right here is just like 0 0.999 minus 1 and you will get negative 0 0.001 so this is a number a little bit less than 0 so I will just write it as 0 with a little negative here and the key right here is negative now 1 minus plus 2 this right here for sure it's going to be positive this plus that right so multiply by positive so now we have positive 5 divided by 0 negative yeah this is negative times positive so on all, we end up with negative infinity. So the answer for this one right here is negative infinity. Right? 